How can I claim that the English language goes all the way back to the 5th century when it was clearly changed beyond all recognition when the Normans invaded in 1066? Ok, this channel is really about Germany, so this isn't a subject that I normally talk about, but I will try to keep this video as relevant as I can. First, I made a video a few months ago about when German started, and so I will be responding to some of the comments that I got on that video. Second, I will be making comparisons with the German language. I will also be responding to a video by Ollie Richards, in which he said a few things about English that I simply cannot let him get away with. I was reluctant to do this at first, since my knowledge of linguistics is actually quite basic, but when I saw that he describes himself as a teacher, author, speaker and language learner, and not for example as a linguist or a language historian, I felt that I'm probably on safe ground here. Before we get into it, let me briefly introduce you to a rough timeline of the English language. We can identify three phases. Old English or Anglo-Saxon, which was spoken from the 5th century to the 11th century. Middle English, which was spoken from the 11th century to the 16th, and Modern English, which is what we speak now. So, the Norman invasion began the transition from Old English to Middle English. Middle English started a transition to Modern English in the 1540s. Remember that, because it's going to become relevant later. Ok, so let's begin. Take it away, Mr Richards. When the Normans invaded England in 1066, they bought more than just soldiers. They also bought the French language. Merci beaucoup. Now, to be fair, we are talking about a short, which means that Ollie has a maximum of 60 seconds and can't be expected to explain everything. But just to clear this up, the language that the Normans brought with them wasn't modern French. It was a mix of dialects of Old Norman and Old French. This mix of dialects became the language that we now know as Anglo-Norman. Over the next 400 years, they tried to make English, then a very Germanic language, more like French, a Romance language, but they only partially succeeded. Uh, no, that's not really what happened. The Normans didn't try to force their language onto the local population, or at least they didn't try very hard. They did influence the English language, to be sure, but there was no plan that I know of to eradicate English. In fact, it's more accurate to say that the Normans ended up speaking English. And they had a history of assimilating in exactly this way. Their ancestors were Vikings who settled in what is now Normandy and wound up speaking the Romance languages of the area and simply added a few of their own words. And that's exactly what they did when they settled in England. They added some words, but mostly they assimilated into the local culture and not the other way around. There is another issue that I'm going to point out here because it is directly relevant to my channel, and that is that using the modern German flag to represent Germanic languages is at best misleading. This confusion between German and Germanic is a common problem and it leads people to think that English descended from German, but that's not true. English and German are both Germanic languages and they have a common ancestor which is not German. Germanic is a family of closely related languages, not just German and English. And this is very important to understand. But then it's probably a mistake to use modern flags that represent modern countries to symbolise languages as they were spoken nearly a thousand years ago. The Norman nobles had an enormous influence on how much English was written, but much less so on how it was spoken. This created a split between formal written English and informal spoken English that persists to this day. There is an element of truth to this, but the effects aren't quite what is being described here. When it came to keeping official records, writing laws and so on, the Normans did indeed use Anglo-Norman instead of English, and Anglo-Norman did remain the language of royalty for a very long time. We still see the effects of this today, with words like jury, attorney and mortgage, taken from a variant of Anglo-Norman known as Law French. Or in the world of heraldry, as for example in the official description, the blazon of the royal coat of arms of the United Kingdom. 
Heraldry uses a lot of jargon taken directly from Anglo-Norman. But what this meant was that educated people became bilingual. We didn't really see a mixing of Anglo-Saxon and Anglo-Norman. What we did see was that because English was no longer used for official purposes, it no longer had a standard form, and so it fragmented into different dialects. As for the split between informal and formal registers, that's not unique to English. Anyone who's learned German, for example, will know the difference between Ich bitte Sie das zu unterlassen and Hör auf! Or, more subtly, I might, for example, read Erfunden wurde das Verkehrsmittel Zahnradbahn sozusagen irrtümlich. But I would probably say Man hat die Zahnradbahn quasi aus Versehen erfunden. It is true that in modern English, formal language tends to have more words of Latin origin than informal language does. But that's not necessarily because of the Normans. And that brings me neatly on to the next point. Nobles used words of French or Latin origin, while peasants continued to use Anglo-Saxon terms. So the king had his cavalry from the French cheval, but a stableman would talk of caring for a horse, the old English form of horse. This is a surprisingly consistent pattern. You can often guess a word's origin based on how sophisticated or academic it sounds. Now, we've all been taught in schools about how we got the names of animals from Anglo-Saxon, but the names of the meats from those animals from Anglo-Norman because the peasants raised the animals and the lords ate them. But that wasn't a very common thing. Mostly the Normans added to the English language words relating to things that they were in charge of. Things like royalty, the government, the military, the courts. And yet, even though cavalry is a military term, it didn't come from the Normans. Remember how I said that the transition from Middle English to Modern English began in the 1540s? That's almost exactly the same time that cavalry entered the language, nearly 500 years after the Norman invasion. It's not even borrowed directly from cheval, but comes from the Middle French cavalerie, which in turn comes from the Italian cavalleria. Let's take the words sweat and perspire. Sweat is the Anglo-Saxon word, while perspire is from the Latin this is an even worse example because perspire didn't enter the English language until a hundred years after cavalry, and it didn't mean sweat until 1725. It was originally a scientific term, but educated people started using it in normal speech as a euphemism. You see, by this time, if you wanted to study theology or science in Europe, you had to study Latin and Greek. Those are the languages of the old Roman Empire, which previously had contributed so much to European culture and history. And Latin was used as a lingua franca, which meant that if you could speak it, you could study anywhere in Europe. And so using Latin and Greek terms was a sign of education and status. And that is where we get the idea that using terms derived from those languages makes your speech seem more formal. In particular, we often use them in science as technical terms. You may have a cold, but to a doctor you have an upper respiratory tract infection. At the same time, France was the cultural centre of Europe, and so educated people also learned French. And they showed off by using French words in their everyday speech. This was the case not only in English, but in other languages as well, including German. It's surprising just how many German words are in fact borrowed from Latin, Greek and French. Not as many as in English, but still quite a few. In fact, there used to be a few more, but at the end of the 19th century there was a bit of a backlash as some people felt that there were too many foreign words in the German language and started replacing them with German language alternatives. You can often tell which ones they are because this movement never got to Switzerland, and in Switzerland the German language still retains some of these Latin-based words. Nowadays, of course, it's English that's the global language, and quite a lot of English words and phrases are finding their way into German. But but that's a different video for another day. For now, sorry Ollie, but the Normans really didn't change the English language as much as you think. They did have quite an impact, but not enough to create a completely new language. Ignitions, boo, 60 seconds and can't be split. No, we've all been taught in school. Oh. Yeah. Remember. Remember. 
from the Latin, nay, the Italian, comes from the Italian, 